Yeah, yeah. I had to write myself a cheat sheet to hit record. <laughs> there we go. That's good. Okay. You want to convene? Oh, yes. So shall we, hold on, let me get to the right place here. Um, should we uh, convene our meeting here? Sounds Second? good. Indeed. Okay. It is so six o'clock. Six o one, six o'clock, yep. I see Raloon Bialik, David Sharp, and Eric Farrell. We have um, Josh Sparks as our EMS chief. He's, hi, Josh. <laughs> Hi, Josh. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome. Okay. So I sent Raloon an email earlier and told her I would read the hearing notices just because I have them in front of me. Mm -hmm. So would you like me to do that, Raloon? That sounds great. Yes, take it away. Okay. Notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Personnel Board will hold a public hearing on April 23rd, 2024 at 6 p.m. on proposed changes to Town of Deerfield General Bylaws, Chapter 35, Personnel, Article 3, Section 3510, to see if the town will vote to amend Article 3, Class Comp, Classification Compensation Plan, to ad adopt a new FY25 Classification Compensation Plan, sorry, um, the text of which may be viewed in the foyer of the municipal offices or on the town's website. This hearing will be held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with House Bill Number 58 of the 193rd General Court, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2025. The link for the Zoom connection is provided in the hearing notice and on the personnel board agenda. Please note, two hearing notices were provided in one publication via newspaper advertisement and on the town's website. Okay, so this is about the classification compensation plan. Hold on one second, and I will screen share this baby. Um, really should work with fewer screens. Oh, I'm sorry, more screens. <laughs> Sometimes there aren't enough screens in life. You are my people, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's our hearing notice and there is a Scrivener's error in it. It should be the FY2025, so I apologize for that, but it is in the meeting materials. Um, and we are talking about annual town meeting on Monday the 29th. Okay, so I up updated the class, comp, class comp plan after your conversation last week, or last two weeks ago, um, which is why I suspect Josh is here. <laughs> um, after we had a conversation, it was really about um, which employees that are classified as grade G do not appear in the plan. And one of the reasons I mentioned to everybody is these are contracted employees. So they, and I, I did some research. Um, these, those positions are not listed in the plan. Um, they're contracted pursuant to the general laws and they're paid outside the plan structure. And one of the reasons is often these positions are subject to political impact. So contracts were, the allowance for contracts was created for that reason. Um, these positions are also often subject to a different salary structure and benefits. Um, and that's really to recruit and retain qualified individuals. So as you'll see on what I'm screen sharing, I have highlighted and struck the EMS chief. The EMS chief, at the time this was discussed back in December, um, we weren't, we hadn't completed the hiring process for the new EMS chief. Um, the reason I've struck it for consideration for you all is because to be consistent with these other 
types of contracts, I think it should be removed so that all those contracts are consistent. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Are they still considered a grade G employee? Yes. As in, in, uh, is, is grade G a, um, term of art specific just to our compensation plan or is it something sort of statewide? No, it is specific to our compensation plan. Okay. Um, so are we considering, um, the EMS chief, police chief, town accountant to be still within our classification compensation plan. It's just that they have a fixed contracted salaries and, you know, their own, you know, probably I imagine their three-year contracts with a, some kind of adjusted um, COLA. They are, they're okay. slightly different. They are considered graded in G. They are not in the plan because they have specific contract terms. Okay, so this leads me to my next comment, which is perhaps for the next public meeting, but I'll just lay it out here now. I guess one question I got reading the, the our new personnel bylaw is should these three individuals be part of the vote for picking the um, member of the personnel committee who comes from town employees? Because that specifically references those members of the, you know, subject to the classification compensation plan. Right. I would say not. They're also department heads. Okay. Well, but okay. That's just but my they, comment. Right. They can still grieve to the select board. They can. Yeah. They can. So that's just um, a, a question. So, you know, if they're taken out of the plan just because they have a contract, so we're not, you know, they're not on this kind of step, but they're really sort of, quote, still in our classification compensation plan under grade G. They're still classified as a grade G. Yeah, um, they still have the same and I actually I don't have it up, but I can show you the job description that is the EMS chief job description if you want to see it. No, um, I, I don't think I need to it see was it. up with the vacancy. So in these cases, these are particular positions that can often be subject to slightly different expectations. That's one of the reasons these positions have contracts. Um, so I would say in most cases, they're subject to most of the same benefits and policies. Um, there are some things that might be particular to say the police chief's contract or my contract, but by and large, we are all subject to most of the same stuff. It's usually benefits and it's um, often other particular things that you could expect a police chief or an EMS chief or a town administrator or a town accountant to do that yeah. predicate this. Yeah, I, I think I, I if I'm don't I don't want to speak for David, but the way I understood David's question, he's referring specifically to the section of the bylaw changes, specific 35 5 section A that lays out the membership. Mm -hmm. And it Absolutely. talks about the fifth member of the personnel board shall be elected by a majority of the town employees covered by the personnel bylaw classification and compensation plan. Right. If I'm understanding correctly, it's should we be modifying that language to make it explicit that these individuals, that was it like, I think there's like four or five, the e chief police, EMS, et cetera, et cetera. Are they allowed to participate in that election or are they not allowed to participate in that election of the personnel board member who is going to be representing the the classification compensation bylaw employees? Can we put a pause in it because I have a con I have something that we could talk about in the next hearing. Okay. Um, but yes, I heard the question. I do understand where it's coming from. These are department head positions, so they're department head level positions. Um, I think the electorate, in terms of who would be considered for to represent employees, that would be covered by the class comp. That was the discussion. Um, but I have another question related to one of the things that you brought up in an email to me directly, Eric, which was about a comment in the draft that mm -hmm. we reviewed two weeks ago. So 
in terms of whether that whether these positions should be included as part of that delegate position the manager part of me says these are department head level and maybe not because if you want the employees to participate not every but every employee is going to be department head level so maybe you want the input from people who aren't necessarily in a managerial position but that's just a thought yeah okay so we may want to just again we could do it in the next meeting but we may want to focus on that line and sort of say you know except for um department heads covered by individual contracts just to make clear that they're not going to be part of that election I have a question about the um, text of that of that portion right there. Um, hold on, let me let me pull it up here. Um, where it talks about the fourth member being the um, person who's selected by the employees. Am I? Is it? Should it fifth. say the fifth? It's the member? fifth. It says yeah, the fifth. It, the, so I have a correction for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the, one of the more recent emails that Casey sent out had both the corrected. marked up version which ha was not corrected but then if you scroll towards to the end of the marked up version there is a quote unquote clean version that's not marked up with any comments where it does indicate fifth member yeah Got it. that was Got one it. Of the, that was something that i had i had noticed too in my review last week of the of the document and i i shook i i shot casey an email about it perfect yeah. i see it now thank you thank yeah. you yeah. So, but for purposes of dealing with the classification compensation plan, um, how does the personnel board feel about voting to make a change to the comp plan to remove the EMS position to be consistent with the other ones? Carolyn's coming on now. Okay. Um, I would suggest that either, and I thought we had this conversation, that either in that grade G, you leave the EMS chief line in, you leave the police chief in, you leave the town accountant budget person in, but you just delete all the steps, all 12 steps, and you just write something that says, you know, contracted position. And then you're at least acknowledging and, and on the plan, it shows that those three department heads are, you know, part, they are grade G in our compensation classification plan that would be i mean that's one option the other option is just to delete them but if they are technically these grade g people still in our comp plan as grade g it seems like they should be somehow referenced in this overall document that the town you know folks well, in you town part-time people that aren't listed in the in the class comp and right now the personnel by, by law allows for that um so to some extent, I hear what you're saying, um, but in some cases, these people or these positions based on the contract terms themselves may be different. That I think is the reason that they were removed. And that seems to be consistent. I actually asked counsel this question when I talked to her earlier about Eric's question, um, which is a different hearing. Um, so what we could do is we could add a note that says these positions, like I had put it down where it says grade G, but are outside of the class comp because the contracts exist. Um, I think to your point about the elected piece, which is the, the next hearing, um, well, I was I, trying to transcribe what you had said earlier to sort of let's say. Just, well, why don't we stay on this one point here, just on, on this issue. So, I mean, so the other thing is to have a grade G box like you have, you could then below it have a grade G contracted positions and just list the positions. Would the note that, that, that Casey has in there right now be sufficient for that purpose, the right underneath the yellow, the highlighted section that yeah, there is 
Yeah. She has a note that says the following employees classified as grade G do not appear in the classification compensation plan as they are contracted according to, and she references the specific general laws, yeah. um, both for pl chief of police and EMS chief, and then different law for town accountant, budget director, and the town administrator. Okay. So it uh, is, uh, um, those lines that are there, is that going to be part of the official uh, class comp plan document? Well, that's my question. I can put it in like that. Because um, that's that's my point. I mean, if, if that's referenced that way, then I think that's good. You're being transparent. Your people are understanding those positions yeah. are part of grade G. Your your line there says the following employees classified as grade G do not appear because they're contract. So I'm fine with that. Just adding, you'd add yeah. the EMS chief position. I have no idea whether there's a statutory uh, site to that it's position as well or not. Sorry, it's it's the it's similar in the same pub, in the way that police chief is public safety. So, so they're kind of, they're both, both police chief and EMS chief are covered by the same general law is what you're saying. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I see it in there already. Sorry. Next. To, yeah, it's already there. OK. So that would really be my question. I would unhighlight, you know, if if you voted to make a change to remove EMS chief from what is seen in the main text of the class comp and allow that notation which is at the bottom below the other highlighted section um it just it does reference separate class comp plans for collective bargaining and for those four employees okay. yeah i i see carolyn has her hand up thanks i just want to make sure we're consistent so i mean i i'm a, i'm really supportive of this uh, to put it this way, it's informative um, and it's consistent. And that was really why I was concerned. I just wanted to make sure we were approaching this all the same. That's all. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm with I'm with if we include that the language, the, the following employees, et cetera, et cetera, on the class patient compensation plan. I think that I'm that makes sense to me. It's transparent. It's I think it's fairly straightforward in terms of, you know, if somebody has questions, oh well, why don't I see, you know, the step one, et cetera, et cetera, for these particular people? Well, it's because here's why. And and everything's open books, you know, people can look up their general laws, whatever, and you know, check their, you know, legislative, whatever, regular whatever word you want to use. So, I mean, I would, I will open up to see Rulon, if you have any other questions or David or comments or. No, I generally agree. I guess is, I mean, is there any reason not to remove the EMS chief from the, the listing that we had before and then include the blurb at the bottom? Cause I like it all being clear and transparent and but is there any is is there any reason that we know of not to do this? Because it seems to make a lot of sense to me, unless I'm missing something. I think we're on favor. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything that would prevent a, to say not to and you're, to kind of respond. I would say, you know, the fact that the EMS chief, you know, is a contract position now. You know, it was in the original plan what we discussed back in the fall because we hadn't finished the hiring process. You know, I I would be supportive of a motion to remove the EMS chief line from the grade G chart of the classification compensation plan. Um, remove the yeah, other yellow highlighted portion that says should be removed, etc., and include or insert the bottom blurb that talks about the following employees classified as grade G do not appear as they are con contracted employees according to blank. Yeah, I really I really like that. Um, does anyone, I mean, it seems like we all like it. Should we vote to to make that change? We should. Sure. I would, I would make, I would, what I just said, I would say that was my, that was a formal motion. Second. Okay, then, um, then let's vote. Um, I, and, and maybe I should, should just see, um, I know, Josh, I see you on the call. Do you have any any input or or comment about this? Thank you for asking. Not really. Um, I'm just here because I knew my name was going to be called a lot. 
Um, so, uh, honestly, uh, my employment contract uh, makes all of the, the things we would find in class comp um, very clear. So it, it falls outside of that structure. So I, I really like that idea of uh, what you're looking to vote for. Uh, it just makes sense. It's very clean. It's it's efficient. Yeah. Yeah, Casey. Um, just a point of order, Raloon, before you take a vote on a motion to approve the class comp, you should just see if anybody else any, has any other public comments like you did a minute ago and then close the hearing so you can then take your vote. Okay. Okay. Yes. Is, do we have anyone else on the call that I can't see anyone else? I don't see anybody either. Okay. Um, any other comments before we close the hearing? Just thank you. I really appreciate you doing this. <laughs> of course. All right. So we'll consider the, the first hearing closed. The um, And what? Say that again, Casey. Make a motion to close the hearing. Make Okay. So I make a motion to, to close the hearing. Second. Okay. Uh, David Sharp? Yes. Eric Farrell? Yes. And Rulin Bialik, yes. Okay. Now let's... Do we need to make the motion Eric, again? Right. <laughs> what? Okay. I will I will reiterate and I'll re restate it. I make a motion to remove the EMS chief line from the grade G classification compensation plan chart, remove the yellow highlighted portion below, at the bottom of the chart and insert the last text of the line as presented by the town administrator citing the classification compensation plan exclusion based off of the fact that the chief of police, EMS chief, town accountant, and town administrator are contracted positions. Second. Okay, great. Um, I think we, any more conversation before we vote? Speak I'm now. Good. Okay. All right. Uh, David Sharp? Uh, Dave Sharp, yes. Eric Farrell? Yes. And Raloon Bialik, yes. Cool. Thank you. All right. All right. Um, let's make a motion to open the next public meeting. Do you want me to read the notice? I think so. Oh, wait. Can I ask one question before we go there? Sure. Um, who wants to make the motion at town meeting? I actually have to ask this question because I have to finish the motions with council. Which motion? The motion to move this to move the classification plan article. So do, do we we make that motion now, or or somebody needs to be at town meeting to do that? So that's the question. If somebody's, I can certainly have. Um, a you better be at town meeting point. anyway. Whether you make the motion or not, you should be at town meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy question, Eric. The way you phrase that. I can't say. You know, anything. I do have two little kids at home. <laughs> Fair I would enough. Need to, I would need to make arrangements. Fair enough. <laughs> um, so to your point, yes, somebody um, needs to make the motion at town meeting. I'm just asking because I try to reach out and find out who's going to do what. Often a committee member will do that if they're available. I know Raloon's done it in the past, but I didn't know whether she was coming or not. So if not, I can assign the, mo the motion to somebody else, but. Well, do we know, I, I have an appointment from six to seven, but then I was gonna come after that. I'm assuming it will still be going. Um, it starts at seven, so yeah. Okay, um, so I could do it if, if it's gonna be a little later in the one, you know, along uh, of the, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it until 7.30, ah. that's what I'm saying. So. Um, one of the members of the board select board could do it or David, you could do it. You're also a member unless you're not going to be at town meeting. No, I'll be there. I'm, I'm, I'm fine to do it. Whatever's the most efficient way okay. to get this done. Time wise. Okay. So, you, so if you wouldn't mind making the motion for the class comp, I'm probably going to ask you, would you be willing to make the motion for the bylaw change? Sure. Okay. I just would like to know so I can put the name in my motions. Okay, thank you. All right, let me get back to my notice. Um, 
Notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Personnel Board will hold a public hearing on April 23rd, 2024 at 6 15 p.m. on the proposed changes to the Town of Deerfield General Bylaws Chapter 35 personnel to see if the town will vote to delete the entire chapter and substitute in its place language for the following sections 35 1 purpose and intent 35 2 statutory authority 35 3 applicability 35 4 effect on prior bylaws and other policies 35 5 personnel board 35 6 establishment of personnel policies 35 7 adoption of personnel rules and regulations 35 8 personnel relations review board 35 9 severability the purpose of this public hearing is to provide interested parties with the opportunity to comment on the proposed changes to the Deerfield personnel bylaw, the complete text of which may be reviewed in the foyer of the municipal offices or on the town's website. The link for the Zoom connection is provided in the hearing notice and on the personnel board agenda. I didn't read the hearing will be held remotely thing because it's on there. <laughs> Do we need to make a motion to open the, the hearing? Or? Yeah, you could do that. Oh, okay, so I'll make a motion to open the hearing on on what Casey just read. The public hearing. The public, the public hearing. Yeah. Second. All right, David Sharp. Okay. Aye. Are we, are we, are we, you don't need to vote, we're just done. Yeah, you can just <laughs> Sorry, I always get confused when we're. <laughs> it's It's not easy, I don't remember all this stuff. Anybody in the public there that we don't see that needs to be let in or somebody? No, nope, usually I get a doorbell when I need to admit somebody. Yeah, so okay. I usually do that in sort of as I'm managing the meeting. I, I have to go to a 350th, but thank you all for doing so much work and especially the last minute before town meeting. It is always such a rush. And so thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. <clears throat> okay, so as Eric mentioned earlier, there were, and I am going to screen share this. Um, ooh, now I can't find it. Oh. What do you want to screen? You want me to grab it? I think I grabbed. Is can you see it? Yep. That's that's not the clean uh -oh. one. You want the one with um, edits? Well, the one with edits does show that fourth being changed to fifth later. Down there. There it is. There it is. Okay, so yep. this is updated as of the 19th. So this is what was posted. We, if you look, and most of our conversations been in 35.5, which is personnel board composition, mode of selection in terms of office. So in this section, council did catch that clarification from fourth to fifth when, because we had discussed having a full complement of five members. Um, so I had asked council to make a change to that. Um, so you'll see that I just highlighted the fifth member. So that was caught. But one thing that Eric had brought up was there was a comment in the markup section of the the first version, which I just sc scrolled through, that didn't have the entire comment there. So I asked council about it. Um, and basically, the I'll, I'll tell you, I wrote down what council said. So essentially, you're talking about the composition and the employee representative. So in this case, the comment council didn't fully explain, but she was typing. So um, essentially recommendation from council is an employee representative should not be a voting member. And the reason is employees, and I'm saying this just, this is literally the, uh, the comments from council is, so there's, there's a question employees perhaps should not vote on their own compensation or that of their peers. There could be a comp conflict of interest there. And employees shouldn't have any connection to poss possible grievances. Again, it would be themselves, their peers, and there could be a conflict of interest there. So essentially, 
what council was was trying to be cautious with us about was to remind us that there are cases where we run into conflicts when an employee representative might be on a board like this. So she was just trying to make sure that we were aware that that's a concern. And as far as the the, the grievance piece, I you know in our last meeting, I think we all, if, if I'm not mistaken, were in agreement that it, you know this employee member of the personnel board would not be eligible to sit on the you know and participate in the gre any grievance process um, for that reason. Yeah. Yes, we had talked about that and we had made yeah. a change to, to handle that. Um, in this case, I wanted to clarify what you were asking, Eric, and give you that answer. And so to the extent that I tend to be cautious like counsel, um, my suggestion is that the person not be a voting member. On the other hand, I remember the conversation we had at the last meeting. So you tell me, you tell me what you think. Because doesn't it to defeat the whole purpose of um, sort of democratic uh, employee representation to um, not have them as a voting member? I would I would agree obviously on the grievance they shouldn't be involved. I certainly there would be conflict of interest laws I imagine where certainly it makes sense for them not to vote on on their own compensation so they can stop that. But in terms of the basic policies that we may be recommending the select board implement as part of the personnel manual. The whole point of having them there, I thought, was not just to get their input, because clearly we have open meetings that people can give their input, but was to actually have, you know, someone at the table representing the town employees who gets a vote. I hear what you're saying. And I guess um, what I'm saying is the conflict of interest is really a financial thing to me. So I get that, you you know, we could make that clear, um, but I don't think it's a conflict of interest for them to be, you know, voting on a leave policy or, you know, you know, or whatever, some kind of Sunday policy that that affects all of the town employees equally. That's that's a good point. I mean, if you know, if the town employee we get is a highway person and there's a specific policy that we're about to do that involves only things that happen on the highway in the highway garage. OK, then maybe that's another very specific issue. But but in case it took kind of a related question sorry to interrupt the that's okay are our town employees subject to the annual state ethics and conflict of interest training yes. okay so i mean I, I think that would in 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 many respects you know address some of those concerns they i mean i'm a town, i'm a state employee myself and so i i i know that i know the training very well um, and so it, it definitely covers a lot of the, what David is bringing up as issues. And so, you know, the, them being required to do that training on the regular, I think, can serve to mitigate any, you know, issues that that town council is bringing up. So, yes, they do have to they are subject to conflict of interest, just like the rest of us are. <clears throat> um, I think in some ways council is trying to remind us that we should be cautious about, I don't even know if there's a good way to put this. Um, hold on. I might stop screen sharing because I'm, I guess, I guess council is just trying to be, help us be mindful of the fact that when you do have policies in front of everyone and a, a place at the table is a place at the table um at least there's yeah we have open meetings but there isn't always interest because there isn't always sort of this engagement um with town employees to your point david um in terms of i think the voting non-voting question i simply am cautious about the fact that this is a fairly small group of people. Um, and often the group is fairly, the groups are very fairly close. And the employee representative, regardless of whether they do conflict of interest training or not, 
could could be <sighs> might not be completely objective. I mean, I have those moments, I'll be honest with you. Even as a management person, I still have to find the objectivity some days because sometimes I'm pretty engaged in something. On the other hand, the purpose of having somebody at the table is to give them the entree to participate. Am I hearing you right, David? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't expect the, empl the employee representative to be objective. I would expect them to be advocating for their fellow employees. And that's the whole point of having yeah. offered up this position, I thought, was to be a little more, you know, democratic. Mm -hmm. No, sense. I... I yeah, I and, I, and I'm with you. I think, you know, to, to not give them the ability to vote, it's it's like, oh, well, we value, we, on one hand, we're saying we value your voice and your, you know, the voice of the employees, but we don't really, not really. <laughs> you know, because we're, you don't get to vote on anything. You know, we'll listen to you, but, you know, but and. and it, it would, and you know, yes, that I'm with David. I could, I would certainly see that there would be a certain level of advocacy and, you know, potential clouding of objectivity, at least to the extent that maybe Raloon and David and I have in the sense that we aren't town, we are not town employees. And so we don't have that. Um, but on the same respect, we are not town employees. And so we don't have that perspective. I think it would be helpful for us. It, you know, presuming that we continue to serve in the roles that we're serving, you know, I know that this whole change of, of the bylaw in general could potentially mean that, you know, any one of us, you know, could not be here in, in six months for whatever reason or another, um, mm -hmm. because we're changing the, the way in which the, the membership is selected. But um, it, I think it's, it, it is a voice that I think is missing. And not to say that it would always change the way that we talk about policies and recommendations and change votes that we've made in the past, but it's certainly possible. Um, but I mean, we are all, you know, professionals in our own field and, you know, are relatively objective for the most part, as in my experience on the board thus far, and are able to, to weigh pros and cons you know, independently and decide, you know, what is, what is, you know, what is best for an individual versus what is best for the collective and, you know, what is best for the town, really. Okay. Would it be possible, like, let's say it was, um, you know, the, someone on a, of a specific, it's going to be someone who is of a specific grade and of a, a, a step, a certain position on the compensation classification grid. Mm -hmm. And let's say we were voting about, you know, a proposal to change that classification, something that would really directly impact like the salary of that specific person. Then that seems like that would be an appropriate moment for them to abstain from voting. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I, and I would agree with that. Yeah. But other than that, I agree that having them, you know, having it be a more democratic process that, yes, they will vote in the interest of the group that they are representing. And that's what we that's basically what we want. Um, okay. But I don't know Does... if it could it be possible to add a clause that, you know, they will abstain from from a vote that specific that pertains to their specific position. Salary think, or something like that. I would imagine they have to because of the conflict of interest. Conflict law. of interest. Yeah. You wouldn't even have to state it. It's a given. Yeah. They couldn't vote yeah. on. It. You would have to abstain right. because of conflict yeah. of interest. Right. All yeah, right. There's, so there's no yeah. motion or proposal to change anything here about that, right? You guys. No, other than that, I think it was just to clarify. It was the fifth member, not the fourth member. Yep. And the, the the question that Casey was talking about that I had brought up was like in the in the notated the, the section that had the comments, one of the comments didn't have a complete sentence. And so right. it was like, well, what what are they saying? Yeah, it was there was this one, the comment, I think it was the JF JF nine. It talked about if personnel is going to um, continue 
me see if I can read it correctly. I don't know if continue you continue to be involved I'm, I'm in the process of determining it. the correct set for employees. It is suggested that the employee representative. And then there was a blank. What? Yes. Yeah. It's like, what are they recommending that the employee representative do be or, be or say or whatever? That not was be a that voting was the, member that was because the of that of thing, <laughs> which is conflict. So in your case, what you're saying is, is we all we all agree that co state conflict of interest law supersedes this. Am I hearing that? Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah, because that 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 applies to it doesn't it, that's not town specific. That is state specific. So yes. any position that is determined to be subject to the state laws and regulations and subject to the state conflict of interest laws as passed by the Massachusetts state legislature, that takes precedent, just like federal laws take precedent over state laws if there's a conflict. Okay. So I have a question. So we 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 have this vote on, you know, this updated excerpts of the bylaws that pertain to personnel. And yeah. there are a couple a couple changes in there. One is this change to the number of people include and to add an employee. Mm -hmm. um, another change is to have this, the personnel manual as right. right is it. And then are all of these sections have something that's changed and that's why we're having to vote it. So you have to do the recommendation anyway, because it's, it's a change. The bylaw requires any change to the bylaw be recommended by you guys. Um, in this case, there's elements of the bylaw that are, are essentially being pulled out and that's benefits and policies, really. We're also changing sort of the framework where it's in, in some ways making it more succinct um, yeah. and pointing to that manual as the mechanism for personnel administration. One okay. thing I would call your attention to here is we had talked about the um, removal. There's a section in composition here, which is right here, that talks about the removal of a member from the personnel board. And one of the reasons could be absence for 20, 25% of regular meetings in any 12 month period. You know, these were things that we talked about that we didn't, that that had started over a period of time when we weren't, a, you guys weren't able to meet. So I just wanted to draw your attention to that. Um, and also we have this outline of what quorum is. I think I mentioned that at, two weeks ago. So what quorum constitutes when you have voting and non-voting members. Um, what is our quorum definition? So your quorum, of quorum present, which may include ex officio members, a simple majority of the board, excluding the ex officio member, shall be required to take any action on a matter before the board. No, I understand that, but what is the quorum to open the to get the meeting open? So you have six members, one of which is ex officio me. Yeah. Um, so three out of five. It's so half. Three out of half. five, in this case. Um, well, wait, the ex officio is valid for the quorum, I thought. That's the whole point. It's no, the ex officio member isn't allowed to vote on an action. No, 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 but, they, but, they're, but they're there to create the quorum. When it comes to the town administrator position. Yeah, I thought that's not, that's the whole point of it's really. It's, it's, oh, I, I think I see it. So it, the way I'm reading it, I might be reading it the same of, way you are. Of David, the it's... quorum present, which may include ex officio members. Right. A simple majority of the board excluding the ex-officio shall be required to take any action. So when we come to a meeting and we stare at the screen, uh, I'm, what I'm asking is how many of the six constitutes a quorum in our town government? Is it half or is it that to be four, two thirds? In Start this case, we're defining it. No, no, you're defining. OK, I think we're defining the vote. We're saying that a majority of the board is required right. to take any action on a matter before the board. That's just the vote. Are you saying that's also the quorum? That's the quorum to yes, essentially yes. See, I'm I, I'm order not to sure take that exactly. Action, you have to have exactly a certain that. number of people. So it, to me, it, there's there's the first line that says a quorum of the board shall be required for a meeting. 
a quorum shall be required. Um, a quorum present may include ex officio members. So right. that piece tells me in order to have a meeting, we need at least we need a major a majority of the six people who are part of the personnel board, the five voting members and the one ex officio. So what does that because that is an even number? What does a majority consist of? Is three out of six sufficient for a quorum to even hold a meeting? Essentially, you have five members, so three should be right. Ex officio, take the ex officio non-voting member out, which is me. I you feel like the a, phrase, yeah. the yeah. phrase that's throwing us off is, uh, which may include ex officio members. Right. Like if that wasn't there, then it would be much clearer. But we're Indeed. but but I think we had this discussion where because sometimes we have trouble getting enough people, we were including the ex officio member in creating the quorum to be able to have a meeting. And then we're excluding them during the meeting when we're trying to get a majority vote to get anything done. A simple majority of the vote of the board, yeah. not counting the person who can't vote, shall be required to take any action. So essentially. I think you're in the same position you are now. You need at least three members. Three of the five. Three of the five. Yeah, I, I can see. Okay, I can see where. So, yeah. So, in order to hold the meeting, like have a meeting, mm -hmm. you're saying a majority of the six. So, that would mean four. But that could include the non voting ex officio Correct. member, which is you, Casey. So, and, but in order to Same either way, in right. order to take any actions, have any votes, gotta have at we least need a majority of the five voting members. So yeah, yeah, we would be in the same, we would be I in the same we're position where now we need at least three voting members of the personnel board. Effectively, we need three voting members of the personnel board at any given time to have them to not only have the meeting, but then to also take action. Correct. Yeah. Well, and you're only as long as we have an uh, ex officio member present. As long as Casey, which uh, from one of it us seems has, like yeah. she's always here. Usually yeah. I'm here. Which, I designate somebody to be here. So that actually that goes to my next question or or recommendation here for a edit is. Uh, if you move right where it says the town administrator shall serve. Mm -hmm. Can we say the town administrator and uh, or the assistant town administrator? Or just in general or designate or designate. Yeah, I would keep That's it maybe. I would, I would keep it a little it bit more or open. Designate. Okay. Yeah. Hold on one second because yeah, I and 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 the and the phrase or designee is is very common in in this type of um, setup. And I'm thinking of the I've been in two different with two different institutions remodeling their shared governance models, and and the whole phrase or designee comes up very frequently. Okay. Um, that I mean that takes care of it. That sounds good. Yeah. So Hold if on we one second because okay. I want to put that in. Makes sense. But no, that's a good point. I I missed that, David. So yeah, me right. too. Thank you. Okay. So we're so voting that. at the town meeting to have this hearing, and then we're we're voting to say, okay, here are the updates to the personnel bylaws, and and one of those things includes the personnel manual. Are we also voting on the personal manual on at town meeting? No. Okay. No. But we're just voting first, we're just voting to say that it will be included. And then and then once if the town votes this in the way it is, does this proposed personal manual then become No, there is no proposed it, personal manual as part of town meeting. It's it's a it's a framework. It, it's an outline that 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 will be presented as part of the town meeting that we will be, you know, if the town, if the select board and the town votes to adopt this change, then what will happen is we as a select, we as the personnel board will then be tasked with Continuing basically giving, time. putting, putting the meat and potatoes into the framework. Right. Yeah. Okay. And okay. so what I did for you was I took the meat and potatoes and, and David can clarify for a, a bit. I took the meat and potatoes of benefits and policies that are in the bylaw right now and put them in something you can use as a draft. The yeah. reason okay. I did that is because I see came that up at last week's finance joint budget meeting, finance and the select board meeting. And essentially the question was asked, 
which was as of July 1st, if we don't have a manual, what do we do? And after some conversation, both the person that asked the question and myself said, okay, a framework would need to be in place. And we use the basics of what we have now. Makes sense. Makes sense. Which is why I sent you something that included all of that so that there yeah. is something that we can say to people, look, this is what exists now. These are, and there are places in that, that draft that I sent you that show some changes you could make, but essentially you have, it, it gives everybody the status quo. That makes sense. Because I feel like if I wasn't on the personnel board and I was at the town meeting hearing this, my question would be, okay, well then if all the really, this important stuff is in this manual, how does that get changed and approved? Okay. And that you know framework is in the it's, bylaw. That's It gets changed and approved by what the language that we're voting on here, which says we're going to have this committee and we have the power to recommend these personnel policies. And they're open meetings and people can come and they can give yeah. input and yeah. they are essentially um, giving us the authority to update this through open meeting process. Correct. Which, and and, and, and I think by and large, we board. have some of that power. We, we have that recommend, recommend, recommendation power right now. It's just, so I don't think that's going away necessarily. Yeah. No, yeah. It, and that was the other thing. So council and I did clarify that the personnel board is an advisory board, but there are elements of the change to this bylaw that do say, you know, for instance, you make a suggestion or a recommendation to the select board to make a change to the bylaw. If the by, if the select board doesn't act within 45 days, that goes into effect. Yeah. And, and the significance, Casey, of the July 1st date is, was it 60 days or 90 days? That the, oh, so July 1st would be the beginning of the fiscal year. But the, if, if the attorney general's office takes a full 90 days to review a, a change, which yeah. they can do. Yeah. Um, it would mean that July 1st, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't go into effect until after the AG says, yes, it's okay. The select board still authorizes the right to deny. So May, June, July. Sorry, I'm getting an offline question here. That's all right. So, but why isn't it July 29th or whatever, 90 days from the town meeting vote? Because it takes, we have to get in all, all the bylaw changes go in. If they need to go into the AG's office, we have within a month to do it. Okay. Um, and, and then, then it, they take their time to do a review. Right. So isn't our deadline is even further out then, isn't it? It would be past July 1st. Yeah. Yeah, 90 days from when you, okay. But what, you know, the point of, the point of, you know, Margaret, Margaret Nardowitz was the member of the finance committee that asked this yeah. question about what would be in place if, if by July 1st. Yeah. And essentially what the work for the personnel and select board would, would be is to develop the manual and have it ready so that once we know whether it's been accepted or not, if the AG does have to do the review, then we've got something in place. And frankly, just using our framework and reformatting it can work to start with. Um, but one thing that the finance committee questioned was what would happen if there were um, financial implications to making changes to policies. And so that's another piece that, that goes with the framework of budgeting. And in many cases, personnel board isn't as as included in that it's sort of it's a tangent in some ways um but having a member of the finance committee on personnel board creates some of that connection okay that's all i had for oh and what about this are we wanting to edit this language about the vote for town employees, for their member. Done. Okay. Oh yes, that yes, what we were talking about in the previous hearing. Yeah, you're right. We we should address that, like clarifying who is and is not eligible to vote 
to select the employee member of the board. So the fifth member of the personnel board shall be elected by, hold on, do you want me to screen share this? I'm looking at the draft that I can. Yeah, let me just get back to that language. I just gotta make sure I have the right. The employee voice be a voting member, but should not serve as that. I mean, I have, just to be clear, I have no problem with the four individuals, I think it was four, to sort mm -hmm. of quote unquote department head contracting employees we've talked about. I have no problem with them throwing in a ballot for right. employee. I'm fairly sure that I imagine the town would probably not vote for one of those four to be on this committee. Maybe they would. But um, I just want to be clear that they can vote if that language here is used. Uh, um, uh, where, where is it? Um, you know, covered by the personnel bylaw classification comp plan. So if we if it's just very clear to everybody that they're covered because they're in class G, then there's no need to do anything. If people thought department heads shouldn't vote, then we should say, you know, um, majority of non-contracted town employees maybe would deal with it covered by. I mean, I don't, I don't see, do we, I don't see why they shouldn't vote. Fine. Then the question is just, are they covered by this? That's, that's the question. Taking them out of that thingamajiggy and putting them there. Does that make any kind of big difference? I would argue we should just say it doesn't because they're still quote unquote class G and yeah. we have G in they're the still employees. So, I mean, they're still they're yeah. still employees. They're still yeah. classified because part of that classification is to identify exempt and non-exempt, which is FLSA. Um, but employees classify are classified just so we can figure out what structure to put them in. So yes, according to their job descriptions, they are classified as G. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now let's just leave it. No, yeah. it's around. Good luck running that election. <laughs> yeah, Although I know. That with sounds technology like that. now, we should be able to do it with a few clicks, hopefully. <laughs> Take nominations know, and then put it to a vote. <laughs> Bing, bang, boom. So uh, so the only change I have right now is to the part, and I had highlighted it a second ago, um, was... Adding after, the or designee. Yes, after the town administrator where it's highlighted, it says or designee. Is that what the. Is, Should that we say what they, you, is it their designee? Is it the town administrator's designee? Um, it should be, I think. Okay. Yeah, I would I would agree the town that the town administrator should get to pick his or her designee. Um. Uh, just stick in there. How do you, I don't know. I try to stay away from his, her now. Um, there, their designee. T H E I R. Sorry, you're right. I, I, I was refer. I, I mean, when I used the word his or her, I was referring to the town administrator person. Yeah. Right. As opposed to them. Their designee. Their yeah. designee. Their designee. That would be fine. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay because that would be the change that I would submit for inclusion in the guide. So what happens now is it's now that you've had your hearing, your recommendation would be this language that, and I was trying to screen share it and I was having trouble with it. Um, so it's the, right um, so it's the line, the town administrator shall serve in an ex officio non-voting capacity. Yeah. That's the that's the sentence that we're adding the I can't seem to get the right screen hold on a second. Okay. On. I'm just having trouble with my screen sharing abilities right now. You guys can admire my dog while we're waiting. <laughs> <laughs> if he looks very cute. <laughs> All right. What do you see in front of you? We see the yeah okay. Do you the see town where it says the highlight yeah, where they're designated? There. Yep, that's where I thought we were going to put that the insertion. I would, I would that that's fine with me. Okay. That looks good. 
All right, I just want to make sure because I kept trying to screen share that and it, ke it kept being not doing what I wanted it to. So, all right. Well, so you might have too many tabs see, open in your in your screen. It's probably why <laughs> I've been there, so I can I can understand the pain. It's crazy. I have so many tabs open, you would not believe it. Oh, I probably do. Um, I think I reached fifty one time. Oh my god, that's more than <laughs> I get I've had 18 or 20 open though. All right. So town administrator or their designate. Yes. And that's the only change. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So is the board willing to, um, Raloon, you might want to check and see if anybody else has any public comment about it. Yeah. Do we have, I think our, I guess. We oh, have I'm sorry. Quick question. And mostly because you mentioned this, uh, you just said something about part-time employees, something about part-time employees. So right now, some part-time and temporary employees are not classified on the class comp plan. And the okay. personnel bylaw does allow for that. Okay, no, my different question. So uh, 35.8, the personnel relations review board, mm -hmm. we have the authority to adjust the grievances. By the way, I love that word, adjust the grievances. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So Is anyway, that some but, technical up, legal term? I don't know, but adjust the grievance. I mean, that means we're getting the grievance after it's happened. Probably, yeah. Anyway, yes. it says adjust the grievances of all full-time and regular. Sorry, forget. I don't know where my mind's at. It says part-time. Got it. Losing my mind. It's a long day. Full-time and regular part-time. I didn't see the, yeah. I don't I underlined it, but I thought for some reason I underlined it, but there it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because that's what I was, because full-time regular employee and part-time regular employees, I mean, hopefully we wouldn't have too many other issues. We could also create a policy about, because there's some definitions we're going to have to deal with later on in a manual. That sounds good to me. But so just to clarify again, because this may, so, so while we, we have an advisory power here on all these personnel manuals, we are basically able to be the final judgment on a grievance. Is that? Yes, that's what a personnel relations board does. Okay, so we overrule sort of going to court. the select board then. We overrule the select board decision potentially, or we adjust it. <laughs> but adjust it. Potentially. Okay, all right. I just want to be clear it. that that is sort of you know the authority we would wield. That's the intent of a personnel well. relations board yep. is, to, okay. is to be outside of the structure, the hiring structure, so that yep. there can be some objectivity there. Yep. Um, I will say right now, if we ever got to that point, I would recommend that we consult with, in, in a similar way as I would do with another board, I would recommend that we consult with a, in some way, consult with council to make sure that we were dotting our I's and crossing our T's if you ever had to act in the in the framework of a personnel relations board. Yeah, although there's that sub language about provided we do not involve the town in an expenditure of money in excess of the appropriation made exactly. the use of such yeah. That's the reason. Um, and I've had this situation with other boards where we've had to, I've had to take a request for instance, to talk to counsel, most of the time I don't necessarily have to, but if there's situations where litigation comes up, there are times that the board and as David as a finance committee member, you'll probably have heard this in a meeting at least once. Legal counsel is controlled by the select board. Um, so if there's a question that I think is going to need a permission from the select board, I will ask them to give that permission. Um, because there is that situation where if there's a grievance, for instance, that could be litigated or could go to a higher authority, a state authority or a federal authority, then that opens the door to have to defend something. That's mm -hmm. why I usually will ask legal, ask to be able to get to legal counsel if there's a problem. And another reason to have the personnel administration system that allows the town administrator to oversee that is I have access to counsel. Yeah. Okay, great. It also says here that, you know, it, adoption of personnel rules and regulations, it says that the personnel board down at um, 35.7B, the last sentence, the personnel board shall submit a copy of any proposed rules or regulations to the select board. But that doesn't say 
And then the select board action, the personnel board should vote to determine if yeah, the select board is the final determinant of the personnel rules of the town. Right. I'm trying to figure out, is it just say that they are receiving a copy of what we say, or do they have decision-making, final decision-making authority over it? So they, it, the way I read it is we provide it to them, our recommendation. They have 45 days. If they agree, that's fine. If they don't agree, they have 45 days to reject or yes. whatever. I see. But, that. If they don't, right. but if they don't do that within that 45 day window, then it becomes a policy. They may adopt. Or they can adopt also they can also do their own modifications to what is recommended. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Or they could adopt a modified one. So, OK. Right. And so one thing I uh, one member of the select board had a visceral reaction to that um, because there's this balance of getting policies and then acting on policies. Um, and so I think in many ways, facilitating the town administrator facilitating conversation is a good way to make sure that communication is is um strengthened between the two boards and there have been times and Raloon may remember it there have been times that I've asked personnel in the select board to meet together to talk about something because mm -hmm. that is the best way to make sure everybody's on the same page and has a better understanding of what the policy might be um, it's it's worked fairly well in coordinating the budget review having joint budget meetings so I would my as a town administrator that would be the way i would approach it i don't know how other town administrators would approach it but really staying within we've created a timeline of this 45 days so you know to some extent it's on both parties and the communication conduit to make sure that timeline gets met um so to the extent that I try to coordinate, for instance, job descriptions, usually if you guys see a job description, the select board sees a job description within a two week period or so, and vice versa. If they see it first, then you guys see it. Uh, but that's sort of a coordination thing that I do myself. Um, I think in, in this case, we're defining the fact that a lot of these personnel policies will come from personnel and then get voted, but there needs to be some communication. That's Mm -hmm. sort of inherent I well, think but yeah. maybe it shouldn't be it's interesting because a lot of this stuff like you said used to be in the bylaws and in order for the by the all the thing all the things that are going into this manual used to be in the bylaws and for a bylaw to change it had to be voted but at town meeting right what we're proposing is that it's a personnel manual that we can make recommendations to give to the select board the select board can approve and that the town doesn't no longer has kind of the authority to right. vote on it and i think that may be one of the questions that comes up at town meeting yeah because this has been this is the way it's been for over 40 years right, um, right. what we're asking town meeting to approve is the ability to administer personnel in a more flexible and timely yeah. manner that's not dependent on a town meeting or a special town meeting right. for the people to vote on changes to the bylaw it's right. they are giving the personnel board and the select board the authority to make these changes more quickly and easily because yeah. i'll tell you right now the main reason is to be legally compliant right now we're not legally compliant because we can't change things. Because you, it, it takes it's a heavy lift laws. to change things. Yeah, because it's so it takes so long. Yeah, it's very time consuming, and it takes. I remember it took us three times to change the bylaw one year or yeah. a two year period. Well, I wonder. I guess we'll see what happens at the meeting if if this goes through. You know, it's and how much discussion there will be, how many questions there will be. Um, so to the to the extent that we provide information in the guide i try to put talking points in the guide i haven't started those talking points yet and i wondered if there is anything specific that you want me to say besides the fact that in order to be legally compliant this is a better more flexible way to do this i mean i usually frame them a certain way uh, but that's essentially the main reason is to become legally compliant yeah 
Yeah, and to allow the personnel board to update the town's, you know, personnel policies that haven't been updated in a long time. I think right. that everybody yeah. would take that as a positive thing that we need to get done. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I mean, the list that you put on at the at the end of that document, Casey, it's got like a couple dozen different areas that we don't really have anything for. Right. Which I mean, and one of you know, ADA is a big one. Um, ADA. Leave yeah. is a big one. You know, so it's like we don't have policies for that. And if we follow the current existing framework, it could be several more years before we get all of these in place. Right. And that's the reason. And so to the extent there's also this element of me actually reaching out, getting a grant and getting some help to determine what we need. Yeah. And, you know, the separate policies that are created by the select board, plus the recommended policies that are not in place, which is what you're referring to, yeah. is a key component to proper personnel administration. And I think that's the piece that is important for everybody to be able to see. Um, these are the things that are not there. Yeah. And so what I was gonna do in the guide was I was gonna include some of this so that people can see it. Like this one page, I can copy and paste this. I have this in a Word document. Um, I can put this in and say to people, this is what's meeting, this is what's missing. Yeah, and, and right now under the current structure, it will take it. it we it will take, like you said, and it, it will take an, an unreasonable amount of time to try to establish all of these. Whereas this change will allow us to establish these in a much more timely fashion. Correct. Yeah, that's really the reason to change, and this is why many communities have done this. Yeah. All right. Not to be impatient. But Rilu, you're go. muted. Sorry. That's okay. Thinking, what else do we need to do here? <laughs> I think we need to make sure that there are no other comments from the public. And if so, then we can close the hearing, right? Yes. And then once we close the hearing, then we can, as the board, take our make a motion to adopt this as as presented. Okay. So are there any any more comments from the public? No. Okay. So then I would make a motion to close the hearing. I'll second. second. Okay. And we'll we can vote on David Sharp. Yes. Eric Farrell? Yes. And Rulin Bialik, yes. So okay. this is this what the vote you just took to approve the amended version we just discussed that includes or their designee after town administrator in item 35-5a well we didn't we didn't actually I, we haven't guess. made a motion for that okay. but so I, will, that's I will what I'm, I, I, that's why i'm screen sharing i want to see this yeah i will i will make the motion to adopt that uh, adopt the um amended bylaw proposal with the with the addition of the phrase or their designee in section 35-5A under the town administrator serving in an ex officio capacity. Second. Okay. Any further discussion before we vote? I feel like we've done a lot. Okay. David Sharp? Yes. Eric Farrell? Yes. And Rulun Bialik, yes. Thank you. I'm sorry it was such a heavy lift. <laughs> okay, it's good questions. Fingers crossed, good we questions. did it across the finish line. Yeah. Good questions that we that to, yeah. to, to go over though. And it it feels good to helpful for us to really understand the process and what we're doing and what's happening and so we can answer questions. Right. And sorry so to work on dinner though. So I'm just No, it's good. I I that's why I wanted to try to keep it as short as I could keep it. I'm sorry. Um, but I did. So to the extent that people may ask, at least we have some sort of a manual framework that I can show to people and say, a framework has been developed. Should this bylaw pass, this will be followed up on yep. so that so that the manual is in place in time for any approval. 
All right. Any more agenda items? It looks like there's a fair amount on this uh, agenda. Is no, that all? it was just it was just the man. I just wanted to let you know that I had drafted something for a manual, and it is essentially what's in the bylaw at the moment. What about public work superintendent discussion item? Um, I don't have that ready. The, the board wants to, I will give you one brief update. The board wants to start succession planning for that position. Um, so you will probably see a job description for review and approval by your next meeting. And that was the one thing I was going to ask before we adjourned is in May, our, your normal meeting date would be the 20th, I think. Is it the third Monday? The third Monday is when you normally meet. Yeah, so that would be the 20th. It's going to be a tough meeting for me. Okay. Is there a I've, better day? I've got a niece's graduation. Um, that week, roughly. T Tuesday's fine. Wednesday's fine. Yeah, I'm, I would be a no on Wednesday. I've got PTA that day. But Tuesday is available. Tuesday 21st, it's good with me. Yeah. What about you, Raloon? What does that look like for you? My daughter's coming home from college that day, but I think I think I could do it. I think maybe, yeah, I think I could make sure that someone else can go pick her up. But um or Thursday, 23rd. Thursday would be good for me. Week. I could do the I could do Thursday. That's better for me. That's more open. Yeah, okay, Thursday's so fine on my end. Thursday the twenty third. Yep. Six is that our time? I Six believe is so. Usually your time. I will put it on my calendar. Okay. Perfect. I should do the same thing. Thursday the twenty third, six p.m. Yeah. That not putting it on a calendar has gotten me in some trouble. Ish. Bad idea. <laughs> I know that feeling. Where well, it's like, oh bleep, honey. Um, I have I got to do this. Yes, I know that feeling. <laughs> I kind of forgot to tell you about it three weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. All right. I know that feeling, Eric. Yeah. All right. That's really, I just wanted to let you know that I needed to schedule a meeting and that we'll see, we'll probably see some stuff about the public works superintendent. He will be retiring. So okay. the board has actually scheduled two meetings to start talking about what that succession planning looks like. All right. Okay. Okay. Hey, great. Are we done everything else? I think so. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time and your input. Thank you. Yeah. Thank motion you. Motion to you. adjourn is needed or not? Okay. I, I, I'll move. I'll make the motion. Second. Aye. <laughs> All right, Dave Chart. <laughs> Eric Farrell. Yes. Aye. Aye. <laughs> all right. This thank is you not all. me nodding in the background. Thank you. See you at right. the meeting. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Yeah, bye. Bye. bye.